Hello, this is Bob McClellan. I'm going to address a problem that has been coming up in the OpenXML SDK involving invalid host names in a URI or a link. And this is actually a problem that occurs in system IO packaging, but affects the OpenXML SDK. So I'm going to show you how to create it, what the problem is, and how to get around it. So here we go. I'm start by creating the document to show the issue and I'm going to type in a link here that is invalid, but it's recognized as a link. And if I hover over it, you can see that it has it has automatically created the link. Then it just to uh, show one that does work. This will be useful later when I'm showing how to fix it. Uh, you can see the same thing. So right now you can see this one it will not be valid, and this one is. So I'll save this. I've saved it under the name link.docx in my example directory. Now I wanted to understand what is actually going on here. So the first thing I did was go to the productivity tool and open the file. This will use the SDK to open the document. Oh, I, sorry, I should close it here first just to make sure there's no usage conflict. I'm going to open it up. And look at that's the error that all too many people have been getting. Cannot open the file invalid URI. The host name could not be parsed, which is true. So the next thing I wanted to do was to try it out in the Visual Studio. We'll get to that code in a minute. So I'm going to drag it over here. And I notice that it does open here in this in this tool that allows us to look at the uh, internals of the document. But also notice that this document.xml should have a number of uh, relationships. should have a relationship to uh, the settings, the styles, the theme, the web settings, the font table, and that link. So what's happening, as it turns out, is the exception is occurring here and it's being ignored and so all the relationships are being dropped from this display. So that's not, I can't make the fix here because it's not showing any of it. So that's not helping me either. So I have to go to programming. And I can't use the OpenXML SDK. So uh, I started though, I wanted to find out if I could use system IO packaging maybe I could get around it that way and I wrote a program something like this where the I open it as a package which does not create an error and then I get the part and you can't see it all here but I get the part using the path word document.xml but as soon as I hit this part where it says get relationships from that document then that error occurs so I decided that what's happening is as it tries to build those objects, it's trying to create a URI. I did some testing with the, doing a direct creation of the URI itself with the invalid name and it throws that exception. So it's pretty deep in there and although it could be handled better probably, uh, it is kind of a tricky thing to deal with because the URI class itself is throwing that exception. So we need to get rid of that. That's the best workaround at this point. And so here's the program I created to show how you could do this. And here's the main part just to uh, that would mimic, say, how your program might be written. And I set up the file name because that file name is going to be used over and over. And so uh, there's a, a try because we, we want to catch the exception. I'll do a try to open that. If the if it contains an invalid URI, it'll catch the URI format exception, which is what is thrown. Then I have the method, which I just named clean, to remove the bad links from the file. And fix it is a delegate or a function that will actually correct it. And then once that's done, it can open it normally and so then you would do your processing here and when you're done close it. 
this is a very straightforward kind of example. So here you can see my fixit delegate. In this case, I'm just going to remove parentheses. You could put in a dummy to replace any that have errors or do more sophisticated processing, whatever you think you need to make your program work the way you want. And then here is the clean function itself. And I am using the, I'll show you here quickly, the .NET zip library. You can see the link up here. It's available on CodePlex. And I just took out the ionic.zip.dll and dropped it right into my project directory. You probably want to put it, if you're going to use this often, you probably want to put it in a more central location, but I just dropped it in there and then put the reference in to that library so that I can then open it as a zip file. In this case, I'm reading the file name directly and then extracting it, the, the one I want, which is this word rels document.xml.rels. That's its full path in the zip. And so I extract that into a memory stream. Then I'm going to change it into, or uh, load it into an X element object so that I can quickly modify it. Then I, just to avoid writing out if there were no changes, obviously if you got the exception, there needs to be a change, but it checks to see if there's actually been any changes made. Uh, for each element. And so that that expression there, I'll just scroll it a little so you can see the whole thing. Uh, it's pretty long. Uh, that whole expression is just designed to find external links where the target is not a well-formed string as far as the URI class is concerned. And if that's the case, then I call the delegate with the old value and set it the return as the current value, mark that it's changed. That will fix all the links. And then if it was changed, I just update the entry from the element and save it. And then it'll open just fine. So let's see it work. I make sure, yeah, here we go. Not going to be seeing much here. It's just going to very quickly go in. You see it no longer throws an exception. And now to show you what it did, it made a change to the document. So now you notice the text still has the parentheses, but the link doesn't. So it would obviously take some more code if you wanted to remove the parentheses from the text in the file, but since they don't necessarily match, I didn't worry about that. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that it would open in the SDK without error. So there it is. Uh, I will be posting this code in my blog entry as well, and I think this is a pretty good workaround for people who are having this problem.